So this is my first walkthrough video for multiple choice practice for organic chemistry. So same as before for the inorganic and physical. The link to the questions is in the description of the video if you wanted to do them first. Hope you like the video and if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, to make a start, so I've got the generic reaction there for the hydrolysis of a haloalkane. So the X, the halogen, comes off, replaced by an OH group from the water, and we get an X minus ion. So we need something that will detect halide ions, and that something is silver nitrate, so the answer is B. Question two, so we've got no benzene ring in this molecule at all, so aromatics out straight away. We've got no double bonds, so it's not unsaturated either. So it's allocyclic unsaturated, so D. Question three, so the thing we need to appreciate here is volume is proportional to moles. So you can see it's producing the same volume of carbon dioxide and water vapour, so it's producing the same moles of each of those. So because there's only one C in CO2, but two H's in H2O, that means there must be twice as many hydrogen to carbon in the thing that's been combusted. So the only one that's got that in is C, C2H4O. Moving on to four, so I've already written up there, priority groups are on the same side of the CC double bond. How would you work out the priority group? It's the one with the biggest atomic number. So in A, carbon on the left is priority, fluorine on the right, they're on opposite sides, so it's not that one. B, chlorine's got the biggest atomic number on the left, fluorine on the right, there's the answer. Question five, addition reactions have 100% atom economy, so you can't beat that, can you? So D was the answer. Question six, I'll just run through the four atoms and say what the arrangement is around them. So A, atom one, is going to be tetrahedral because it has four bonding regions around it. 2 is also tetrahedral because you've got the hydrogen, the two bonds to the two carbons and the bond of the nitrogen, so tetrahedral again. Um, number 3, you've got three bonding regions around there. Remember, double bonds count as one region, so that's going to be your trigonal planar, so that's the answer. D, so atom of 4, you've got a lone pair on the nitrogen and three bonding regions, so that's going to be pyramidal. So anyway, C is the answer there. Number seven, which molecule is a secondary amine? So I'm going to rule out B and C straight away because they're both amides because the C double bond O is directly bonded to the nitrogen. So we're left with A and D. Secondary amines have two carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen, so it's A. D is actually a tertiary amine. Number eight, so we're looking for carbon atoms that have four different groups attached. So we've got four chiral centres in this molecule, so the answer was C. Question nine, so we've got a ring in the molecule, so the CNH2N plus two general formula drops to CNH2N. So it's C7H14, so it's going to be C. Alternatively, if you don't like that method, you could physically count up all the hydrogens. So the dots here represent all the hydrogens, and it, can, it adds up to 14. Number 10, so equal amounts of the four compounds are added at the same volume of water, which would produce the most acidic solution. Well, in A, you've got a nitrogen that would accept a proton. That's basic, so it's not A. Um, B could be B because that's an, a weak acid, so we'll just put a little question mark there. Uh, C is an ester, they're neutral, not that one. So the um, ethanoyl chloride, well, let's think about the reaction. When it reacts with water, it generates carboxylic acid, so ethanoic in this case, but it also generates HCl. And so you're making a strong acid and a weak acid, so D is the answer. Question 11, we've got a line of symmetry down the middle of the molecule, so anything sort of equidistant either side is equivalent, so we've got an environment there, one, two, three environments, so C is the answer. Number 12, for me, I thought this was the trickiest one of the 15. So there's the equation that would take place between this dicarboxylic acid and sodium hydroxide. 
we're told we've got 0.1 moles of each of them, so we've got to work out which is the um, limiting reagent, which is the excess reagent, and then think about how many moles of water would form as a result of that. So if we start by looking at the dicarboxylic acid, so for all of those 0.1 moles of acid to react, you're going to need twice as many moles of sodium hydroxide, 0.2. Well, we haven't got that, so this won't all react, so this is the excess reagent. So obviously the sodium hydroxide must be the limiting reagent, quickly explain why. So 0.1 moles of that is going to need half as many moles of acid, 0.05, well we've definitely got enough of that. So they will all react, the substance that all reacts is the limiting reagent. The limiting reagent governs how much product's formed, so if you look at the mole ratio between the sodium hydroxide and the water, it's 2 to 2, 1 to 1, so we're going to get 0.1 moles of water. So all we need to do now is multiply that by Avogadro's number, which gives A for the answer, 6.02 times 10 to the 22. Question 13, really, really important that you know your reaction pathways inside out. So this thing here is a secondary amide. You can make them from acyl chlorides with primary amines, and that's what you've got in A. Question 14, so which radical or radicals are present in the mechanism for radical substitution of chlorine with ethane? Never seen one of those before in all my career, so that's definitely not an option. Yes, chlorine radicals will be produced, and so will ethyl radicals. So two and three only, C is the answer. Question 15, just do a quick sketch of the three molecules. So there they are there. You'll notice they're all C6O2, so it's all about the hydrogens. Hexanoic acid has got 12 hydrogens. So is that one, ethyl butanoate, and so has that one, propyl propanoate. So all three were correct, and so the answer was A. Hope that was helpful. I'll make another one very soon.